Yo guys, what is up? Dave here, coming at you with a new video today. Um, I had some people request while live streaming and just in other videos, you know, regardless of just... They've asked me basically, how do I start modding? How do I look to see if a game is moddable? What do I use? What kind of tools? Etc. Etc. And today I'm going to look at it from an Android perspective because that's what I've done the most of is mobile based modifications of applications and games. And today I decided to pick up the game Pixel Car Racer because I figured it would be a perfect base to figure out if a game is moddable or not. Now I'm not going to tell you here at the beginning of the video if it is or isn't because that would just completely ruin the surprise of if it is or isn't. So if you guys haven't heard of this game, it's available on iOS and Android uh, on the Google Play Store. Uh, Pixel Car Racer, it's a lot of fun. I'm not getting paid to promo this. I'm just making a video based on, you know, trying to teach you guys just what my brain does to figure out if a game is moddable. A lot of you guys have wanted me to live stream something like this, but honestly, I do it so quickly and decide so quickly that it's almost pointless for me to live stream it, so it's better for me to record it. I've actually already gone through and tried to figure out if this game is moddable or not, um, and that's when I realized it's the perfect game to explain all the ways that I figure it out. So without further ado, I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you guys how to do this. I'm going to skip all the stuff about how to get the APK, because honestly it took me forever to get the APK, so I'm not going to even bother with that part. Um, and we're just going to get started. So the first thing that you'll want to know is that APK files are just fancy zip files. They're basically renamed uh, archive files. So basically, if you don't have WinRAR, simply just rename it to .zip. Uh, you'll need to have uh, extensions showing, um, hidden items, uh, where was it? I think it's in options. Um, yeah, hide known extensions, so basically you'll want to uncheck that. But uh, then you can just rename it to .zip if you don't have WinRAR. If you have WinRAR, you can just leave it as APK and you can open it directly. So from here, I usually like to make a folder called, you know, whatever the app is, I shorten it up and the version number. because some apps have different versions. So I open it up and I extract everything. Once I extract everything, you'll see that there's one new folder uh, that was not within that, that APK folder. The classes out. That file came from a different location. As you can see, there is a classes.dex. This is where all the Java code is usually stored. And for that to actually get that down into a source code that we can understand and modify, we have to use something called Dex2Jar, which Dex2Jar has a lot of different things it can do. Um, but the one you're going to want is Dex2Smalley. So you'll take this, just simply drag it on top of the uh, batch file. Actually, that takes about five minutes for this file, so I'm actually not going to do it again. But it'll extract it, and it'll give you these .Smalley files. These files are kind of important, kind of not. They're not really a big deal. There's not much that you have to worry about with them. And then that's when I came to realize that opening it up this way was actually kind of pointless. There was no reason to extract the classes.dex because there's actually no code for the game in the classes file. So from there I decided to check and see if it was Unity 3D based. And no, it's not. As you can see, there is like a product list. There's an INI file right here. Um, and then just some sound files and the splash screen and a portrait splash screen. And then there is this, you know, the music for the game. And there's this GMEZ file and the droid file. Now I'm gonna show you how I figured out if this was actually extractable with WinRAR. So what I did was I went and opened with a hex editor. I use HXD. And you can usually tell what kind of file a file is by looking at its first two bytes. First two to four, usually. And on 7Z files, which are, uh, you know, they're a type of compressed uh, archive file, just like zip or rar, um, this is obviously a 7Z. So that means it's just highly compressed files. There's not much you could do in here. You can't read this. But if you have WinRAR or 7Zip installed, you can just open it right up with uh, WinRAR. So I usually make a new folder. My 
chart boost and I'll extract this stuff. I didn't do this when I was originally looking at it so I'm going to do it now. Um, this GMX file, I've never seen a GMX file before so I'm going to try to open it with Notepad++ because I'm betting it's a text file because of its file size and lo and behold it is a text file. Now there's not really anything special in here to modify so that's not anything to worry about and then from here we can see there is Android source, iOS source, iOS source from Mac. Uh, this stuff isn't really important, I already looked at it. It's just some basic stuff. This code probably honestly isn't even ran and it was just accidentally left in the APK because this stuff doesn't do anything. It's just some iOS code, some Android code. It's something that doesn't do anything. It's not something I would worry about. I'm betting this is a text file. It's a very big text file. I'm sure you can do something with this, but I'm not sure what it is. If it is called and modified by the game engine. But I feel like this isn't... Oh, this is a very big folder. I actually missed this one at first. Header files... Hmm. This actually might be something important. Wow, that's a big file. That's got to be an archive file. So this is just how I figure things out. That's why I left this one folder kind of here without modifying it. Do not know what kind of file this is. This does not have the standard of what you would see. It looks like it's a fully encrypted file. Maybe it's like an iOS based file. Looks like maybe it's something to do with the game itself, seeing as there is some plain text in here in the hex editor that is actually readable. But I do not recommend modifying it because it will probably break it uh, and it will not allow the game to run if it is reading anything out of this uh, GMEZ file. But as far as this stuff goes, let me close this stuff up. It looks like this is just analytic stuff, which is basically advertising within the app like tracks in-app purchases and stuff like that. Uh, in play, let's see what this is. I don't know why I tried to do it that way. Oh, that's for my PSP. Oh wow, I should check my Skype more often. <laughs> Three messages. Yeah, this is just uh, some basic stuff for like in-app purchases and stuff like that. So it doesn't look like this is anything too important as far as I can tell. Uh, let's see what's in current. Yeah, that's just the current source code. Yeah, there's nothing important in here, unfortunately. So we can just basically ignore that file. Now, when it came down to it, I realized that probably 90% of the game is actually going to be within this .droid file. I've never seen a .droid file before. So my first thought was, eh, they just renamed another zip file, and I didn't even bother to check it within the hex editor. Lo and behold, it is not a rename zip file. So I opened it up in the hex editor, and it is a form gen file. Never heard of a form gen file. Uh, this must be, I'm not sure if this game is created on some sort of game engine that I just don't know about, or if it's something else. But clearly you can see that it is a compressed file. This is a sprite file right here. Um, looks like we can search PNG for example and they'll show me that there are in fact image files in here there's definitely WAV files in here uh, WAV format right here RIF list info and stuff like that so that's gonna be a sound effect file so this is a compressed file it's just not sure really what it holds I'm guessing it holds some sound effects it holds all the images of the cars uh, holds the sprites and things like that, but I have no idea how to pull this apart. So that's pretty much where it's stuck for trying to modify this game, is not sure how to pull this file apart. And it looks like there are giant gaps within uh, between the files, which is normal. As you can see, this is just another WAV format file. I'm guessing, I'm not sure, it's been a long time since I messed with hexadecimal and actually looked at like a wave file format in hexadecimal and I'm not sure where the file ends but a good way to find out is usually just copy open up a new tab paste it it'll 
tell you that, and then you can save it. Now we can do just untitled1.wave because we know it's a wave formatted file. So we can try to manually extract this and see what it does and then we can just open it up in VLC. Doesn't do anything. So apparently maybe there is some compression on the files but it just says the uh, file type at the top or I missed something and I just don't know what I missed. But that's pretty much where it's stuck right now for modifying this game. I would love to be able to add body kits and stuff like this, like that to this game. Maybe modify the parts, that would be really cool. Because like if I wanted to, which I doubt this is going to work because it feels like it's all encrypted and stuff like that. I could actually try to find like the names of parts or something like that. Because this is a 15 megabyte file, which means 15,000 bytes. Each one of these is one byte, pretty much. Well, I guess. Sort of. It's hard to explain. I suck at explaining that kind of stuff. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the game. I'm going to go to the dealership. And I'm going to look... Doesn't look like... Well, it doesn't show the names of cars. So actually, I'm going to go to the part shop because it shows part shop names. And we are going to see if there is anything to do with parts, like the actual names of them, within this source code. So what we're going to do is we're going to search VX. So first off, we get that. Yeah, that's not what we want. So we're going to try from there. We're going to go T28 because that's a turbo. So let's just search T28 at that point. Not in here either. Which is kind of surprising because of how hexadecimal works. Um, we're going to search part. Well, it looks like the names of the files are in here, which is good, but that also means that this is probably a custom formatted uh, zip file, which means we can't modify it. But it does look like I was right. It does have all this stuff in here. This is all the files that are in here at the moment. Um, it's just there's not really anything I can do with it that I know of. So we're going to search like PSI. That's not what we want, not what we want, not what I want. What I'm trying to find is, you know, like the stats of the cars, for example. I feel like this kind of stuff is actually going to be listed somewhere else. This is probably going to be in a different file, so I'm looking in the wrong place. But it looks like this could be extracted. We just got to figure out what kind of file type that is and find the way to extract it. But from here, we're going to move on to the last really important location. And we're going to see how this game is actually coded. And usually when it gets to this point, this is when I personally don't bother modding it. Because this is honestly above anything that I know actually how to do. Like when it be when it comes to it and as I thought this is uh, compiled in a .so file so all the code and all the important stuff is going to be in this file for the game now that's that's modding that's over my head I don't feel like doing that and learning it is just a pain in the ass it takes years of experience to know how to do that and uh, yeah but from what I can tell you, this game is not really moddable. It's somewhat moddable, but honestly, you would be better off just, uh, you know, going out, grabbing a game engine, and learning it yourself to remake this. Now, I wouldn't recommend, if you wanted to make a game like this, I wouldn't recommend something like Unity 3D. If you were to attempt to learn to make a game like this, I would look into something like any sort of like game engine that is 2D to begin with. But anyway guys, I hope you guys kind of understand the thought process here of how I do this. Honestly, when it comes to the hexadecimal, which is what people have asked me about the most actually, um, it takes just understanding files, understanding file types, um, knowing what to look for, and all of that. Uh, I will try to touch on this more because there's going to be some combat arms stuff coming. I'm not going to say what's coming, I'm not going to say what I'm doing with it, but this is going to get a lot of fun. I'm going to tell you that right now. 
I am going back to 2012. <laughs> but, you know, this is going to end up being a lot of fun. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope some of you guys sort of learned something. I mean, I guess this wasn't really a teaching video. It was more explaining my thought process, which some people were wondering about. And I hope I finally actually helped you like understand what my thought process is. But I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out.